Good morning. It's Tuesday, July 26, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, Of Grace and Golf, and our scripture is Romans chapter 10, where Paul writes, Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal. For they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Refusing to accept God's way, they cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in him are made right with God. Paul held the nation of Israel in his heart. He wanted more than anything to see them turn to God by faith, which is God's way. Indeed, Scripture informs us there is no other way. Ephesians chapter 2, God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. Unfortunately for Israel, and for many people today, the concept of earning God's approval is ingrained. So many people, especially those who've hardly ever, if ever, read the Bible, misunderstand the way of grace. We don't earn our way into heaven or God's favor. God brings us there by His Spirit when we trust Him. Our son in love, Ken, shared an experience with me he had this month with a fellow he met on the golf course. When you go to the golf course alone, they'll often place you with others who come by themselves. This new acquaintance brought his own stash of refreshments. By the fifth hole, he was quite intoxicated. Drunk and swinging a golf club rarely do well together. Doing poorly at something and an inebriation also bring out unpleasantness, to say the least. The guy swore loudly, and usually after every shot. By the time the round of golf was half over, the man lost it altogether, becoming emotionally undone, at one point sobbing like a wounded elephant. As they began the second half of the round, he walked up to Ken and apologized for his behavior. Ken looked at the man and said, Can I pray for you right now? The man looked at Ken as if he'd been shot. Oh, man, you you don't want to do that. I'm drunk. After a few minutes of talking to him, Ken found out that the man did believe in Christ, but he was embarrassed and he didn't want to pray, quote, in this condition. But he finally agreed and Ken prayed for him. The key connection with this condition and Paul's reminder of not earning your way into God's friendship is that the man knew he wasn't acting right. He imagined he had to get better, conquer his alcoholic tendencies, get his life just right before God would love him. Problem was, he just couldn't seem to grasp that he'd never done that before. And all attempts were futile. There was no power in his personal arsenal of controlling his life and impulses. He remained godless. Ken may never see this man again, but the unexpected offer of prayer to a man who felt totally worthless will stay in his memory. And that will bring him closer to understanding he will never earn his place with God. It will be grace or nothing. For you today... If you've labored under the mistaken idea that being a witness for Christ means memorizing 12 scripture verses and a five bullet point presentation to bring a stranger into the kingdom, let Ken's example find its way into your daily life. When encountering someone who's suffering, being obedient to Jesus' call to witness can be found in that simple question, can I pray for you right now? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.